Today we have this regular cab short bed Whippled F-150 and a bear brake upgrade kit. We're gonna be doing a product review, a step-by-step -step installation, increasing the rotor diameter up front with better pads all the way around, and ultimately some 60 to zero testing before and after to see the improvement. Here we have the bear brake upgrade kit fitting your 2010 to 2020 F-150. This is a great kit to get if you are the kind of person that is not only looking for looks out of your braking system, but also performance. Whether you have a lifted truck or a lower truck, this is gonna provide better braking and obviously better looks too. Can't miss the drilled and slotted rotors that Bear provides with this kit. They have very, very high quality parts. You can obviously see it in the rotors themselves being that they're zinc plated and they will last the test of time. You don't need to clean any of the oils off of the rotors when you're installing them on the vehicle. It's a very easy installation and frankly, it really looks the part too. One of my favorite parts about this kit is the brackets that are included. What this does is replace the factory caliper bracket on your F-150 and allows you to run this much larger rotor up front. The bare rotor will provide a larger braking surface area, which means you have better cooling when you're towing or racing down the drag strip. And unlike many other kits out there, this actually replaces the caliper bracket on your vehicle. Many of the other kits have adapters that can be a little sketchy if they're not installed correctly or manufactured correctly. This eliminates all of that issue by replacing the factory caliper bracket on your F-150 with a bare piece. This kit also includes a matching set for the rear, which is obviously different if you have an electric parking brake versus a manual parking brake. So make sure you look at our product page to ensure that you're getting the right set of rotors for your vehicle. But let's not forget the high performance ceramic pads that Bayer does include to match these high performance rotors. You have the drilled and slotted appearance. You get the increased cooling thanks to the larger surface area and the higher friction pads are all gonna to equate to a better stopping distance in your F-150. All in all, it's just a simple pad and rotor swap with the addition of this bracket to run that larger front rotor. We're going to show you a step-by-step -step installation on how to get it done. Here are the tools required for installation. Before we get the truck in the air, pop the hood and check your brake reservoir. You'll want to keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't overflow as you compress the brake pistons. On this truck, the rotors have seen quite a bit of heat being on a Whippled Coyote F-150. If you have high mileage or your rotors have seen a lot of heating and cooling, then it may be smart to take some penetrating fluid and go ahead and shoot it around each of the lugs as well as around the hub on all four corners before installation. Starting in the rear, use a wrench and a socket to loosen the bolts holding the caliper. Go ahead and remove these bolts. and the caliper can come out now. Just set it on the leaf spring so there's no tension on the brake line. Both brake pads can be removed as well. You can see the difference in contact patch here between the factory pad and the bare pad. This single piston caliper in the rear requires it to be spun in order to compress. You should be able to borrow a tool from your local parts store or a friend to get this done. Get it snug into place in the caliper and lined up with the grooves on the face. You should be able to turn it clockwise until the piston is flush with the caliper. Once compressed, you can remove the tool. Bear includes new brake pad abutment shims, so we'll be able to swap those out now. You can see the old ones were beginning to rust. Bear provides a coating on theirs in order to prevent just that. They simply press fit over the rear caliper bracket, so make sure they are fully seated and secure. and go ahead and get the top done too. We already sprayed some penetrating fluid, but a hammer is going to be the fastest way to get this rotor off. It never hurts to clean off the surface of the hub where the rotor mates to. Some sandpaper or other abrasive works just to knock the rust off the surface. Then the smaller of the two rotors will go in the rear. 
with the R labeled for the right. Grab your new brake pads and put them in place. They are the same, so don't worry about inside or outside. Make sure they are inserted fully. The caliper can go back into place now. Then tighten those two bolts holding it into place. Moving up front, remove the two smaller bolts holding the caliper to the bracket. Remove the caliper and hang it up so the brake line doesn't have any tension on it. You can remove the factory brake pads. Then we need to loosen the two larger bolts holding the caliper bracket to the knuckle. The slide pins and dust boots need to be transferred over to the new brackets. Use some grease and work it into the hole before installing the slide pin. Make sure the excess doesn't just squeeze out of the hole. Then the dust cover can be secured over the lip to hold it in place. Repeat this on the other side, making sure the movement is functional and wipe away any excess grease. The front pad abutment shims can be installed with the larger overhang facing outwards. These are pretty malleable, so if one doesn't click into place, bend it outward slightly and work it into place. Back at the vehicle, we can remove the front rotor. Rotating the hub as you go makes the front a bit easier. With the new front rotor being so large, we'll need to remove the dust cover for clearance. Again, clean the surface off before installing the new rotor. And then the new rotor can go into place. The new caliper bracket can be bolted up. Tighten the bolts down fully. Using the old pad and the C-clamp, alternate sides to compress the pistons evenly. Don't forget about the brake reservoir in the engine bay and keep an eye on that brake fluid level. The new brake pads can be installed. Like the rear, both the inside and outside are the same. Then the brake caliper is ready to go on the new bracket. Tighten the two bolts down. The larger bolts holding the bracket are torqued to 184 foot-pounds and the caliper bolts are 27 foot-pounds. After that, repeat the process on the other side and your installation is complete. All right, a little bit different style of video today. We're in a 2018 to 2020 F-150 regular cab short bed. It's actually a Whipple truck. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to see what this thing does stock. Uh, brake testing, 60 to zero. We've set up some cones. First cone starts at 80, 80 feet. Um, and after that goes all the way up to 130 and 10 foot increments. So we'll see what we got. This is the first stop. We'll do three and go from there.
All right, first one was 108. We're gonna whip it around here and give it a shot again. 107. All right. All right. Bear has a pretty specific pad bedding procedure. I'm going to go over the steps right now. The key here is that you don't want to come to a complete stop. Don't want that hot pad sitting on the rotor in one spot. Of smoke coming out just keep moving get some air through that area drive for 10 minutes to cool the rotors without using the brakes if possible and after you've driven again take it nice and easy you don't want to use the brakes too much if at all and a good rule of thumb is just let everything sit overnight before you do any major driving or any braking or any performance, anything. The best thing to do is after you've bedded the brakes, let it sit overnight, get everything completely cold, and you're ready to roll the next day. All right, we got this bare upgrade kit installed on the F-150. We let the truck sit overnight um, to make sure that the brakes were completely cooled after bedding. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty darn excited to see exactly how well the braking is after the upgrade. I mean, not only the pad compound is different, Bayer does say that this is one of the highest, if not the highest coefficient of friction um, for a ceramic pad, but also the additional diameter in the front rotors allow for better cooling. I hopped on them pretty hard off the bat because after that I got ABS modulation and obviously extended the stop a little bit more. Much better. Uh, 79 feet, that is incredibly impressive. Now that I got a little bit of heat in the tires, a little bit of heat in the brakes, everything's working as it should. Right, 60s. There we go, getting some heat in them. So that's 80, 89. All right, so I'm beginning to think that 110 at first was a fluke, and that is simply because Tires were cold, asphalt's cold, got ABS interference, tires locked up, obviously didn't like that, so rolled out a little bit further. But pedal feel is vastly improved. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a truck. It's an F-150. It's not a Mustang, it's not a sports car. Um, so, you know, pedal feel is a little numb on these things, but the pads uh, that Bear choose, chose to put with this kit, pretty good. Ninety-seven? Ninety-six. All right, ninety-six. When it comes to performance, obviously adding a Whipple supercharger to your F-150 gets you the horsepower you need, but it's useless if you can't stop the truck. The factory brakes on the F-150 are already great. So great that they use the same brakes on the regular F-150s as they do the Raptors. But 
If you're adding 700, 800 horsepower to your Whippled F-150, then you're probably gonna wanna make sure that you can slow it down too. This bare brake upgrade kit is a great way to do just that without breaking the bank by adding huge, massive six piston brakes up front with those kits costing four, five, six grand plus. For this kit, you get the enlarged rotor up front, a better pad compound all the way around, and beautiful drilled and slotted rotors that not only turn heads, but do the performance side as well. The average for the before stops came out to 108 feet, which is super respectable all around. But after adding the bare rata speed upgrade kit, we saw a decrease of 15 feet to an average of 90 feet. That is a huge improvement for just a pad and rotor change, and frankly, it looks the part too. Insulation is just that, it's pads and rotors. The only difference is you're adding that caliper bracket up front. So a huge benefit to this kit over many of the other brake upgrade kits out there is that it doesn't use an adapter. That could be really sketchy if it's not manufactured correctly or installed correctly. Bear cuts that out by including a brand new caliper bracket with the proper offset so you can use that enlarged rotor up front. Everything you need for an easy installation is included. It takes basic hand tools to get it done at home, even if you have the electric parking brake like this F-150. So be sure to comment below. Let us know what you think of these results. If you wanna see any other F-150 videos or bear brake videos, we are all ears. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, the notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.